The title of my message tonight is Chariots of the Frauds. We've examined a lot of evidence today. We've looked at the biblical signs that would precede the time of Christ's coming. We've looked at the book of Genesis chapter 6 and seen that there was some really weird activity going on, about as weird as it is today during the days of Noah. We've looked at the history and the nature of the UFO phenomenon and these alleged aliens, and we've looked at the nature of their message to mankind. What we'd like to do tonight is examine this evidence in the light of what the Bible has to say about the coming deception in the last days, the nature of Satan and angels, fallen angels, and see what parallels we can draw. In Matthew 24, verses 3 through 5, Jesus was asked by his disciples, what would the signs be of the time of his coming? Starting in Matthew 24, verse 3, now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately, stating, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. The first thing that Jesus wanted us to know is not to be deceived. There is a coming deception, a massive deception that's going to be perpetrated on planet Earth, and he wanted us to be aware. He said, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Notice that it's not one. It's many coming in his name. There are going to be many false Christs, many, if you will, antichrists, people that are feigning that they are Christ-like beings who will be coming. Not just one, but many. And they will deceive many. Their primary mechanism to overtake the planet Earth will be through the process of deception. It's not going to be a process of war or a powerful alien force that takes over the planet, fallen angels coming down and wiping people out. It's going to be primarily by deception. Verse 21, he goes on. For there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Verse 23 through 26 of Matthew 24. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So these false Christs, these supernatural beings are going to come onto the scene and they're going to perform supernatural signs and wonders. They are going to manipulate matter in space and time in ways that are going to cause people to believe that they are godlike entities. And it will be so powerful, this deception, that even the elect will, for a time, be deceived by them. Many people, many Christians, many of God's people will look at it and say, this is real. I believe it. This is strong. This is powerful. This is something I can see and grasp. And many will be led away, away for a while. Then he said, see, I have told you beforehand. So he's prophesied. He's told us in advance what to look for. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Or look, he's in Roswell, New Mexico, do not believe it. Verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. And of course, Chuck talked about that extensively. Verse 30 and 31, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I mean, uh, great glory, sorry. <laughs> and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So the sign of Jesus' second coming. Now, of course, we've already seen tonight that the uh, aliens have told us through their channelers that Jesus is going to come on an alien beam ship. Okay, so uh, it says here he's going to come in a cloud. So I'll give you a little tip how to tell the right guy, okay, when it happens. 
you see an alien beam ship, it's not the right guy, okay? <laughs> I don't care what he does or what he tells you, all right? Now, characteristics of the last days. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, Paul the Apostle says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, hot, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. Paul the Apostle in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7, 8, 7 and 8 gives us a little more information about the nature of the coming deception. He says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The lawless one, the Antichrist, we believe, will not be revealed until the church is taken out of the way. We believe that the... That which restrains is the Holy Spirit working through the church. And when the church is taken out, the lawless one will then have full reign on planet Earth to uh, perpetrate his uh, coming deception. Verses 9 through 11. The coming of the lawless one is according to the power, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. So again, Supernatural entities coming onto the earth with supernatural power performing signs and wonders in order to get people to follow after them and to worship them. Because they did not receive the love of the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus Christ said, I am the way and the truth. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. We looked at this verse earlier in Romans chapter 1, verse 25. The effect of the lie is going to cause people to worship the creature, Mother Earth, uh, fallen angels, and Satan himself, the Antichrist himself, will be worshipped. Speaking of those people that are deceived and follow after the lie, it says of them who, ch who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Throughout the Bible, Satan is called the deceiver. He is, accomplishes his purposes primarily through the mechanism of deception. And the most skilled deceivers are people who can convince you that they're your friend. They're a good guy. You can trust me. Even though their agenda is evil, they try to feign benevolence, and yet their agenda is terribly evil. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, speaking of Satan, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, what are some of the lies of Satan? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, Genesis chapter 3 in general, we read about the fall of mankind. Satan deceived Eve, and the first thing he got her to do was to doubt the word of God. He came to her, he said to Eve, Hath God said, has God really said that you should not eat of the tree? So he tried to get her to doubt the word of God. And that's the first thing that Satan will do to a Christian, is try to get you to doubt the word of God. And in Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, it's, it's, um, this, the, uh, Satan, the serpent, said to the woman, You will surely not die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, the fruit, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So after he gets her to doubt the word of God, he says, You're not going to die. He promises her eternal life, immortality. What a great promise. And he said, that if you eat of this fruit, not only will you live forever, but your eyes will be opened and you can be a god. So she can be a god and live forever, according to Satan, and have incredible knowledge. The lies of Satan. Other lies. In this day and age, the most prominent lie is that there is no God. 
that we are the products of evolution, that a lightning bolt struck a puddle three billion years ago and chemicals came together by chance, and you're an accident. You evolved from the primordial goo through the zoo to you over three and a half billion years, <laughs> and your ancestors were a bunch of knuckled dragon monkeys. And I like what Pastor Mike McIntosh says. He works in, he, uh, his church is in San Diego. He says that the monkeys in the San Diego Zoo get together regularly at night when there's no humans around, and they teach their children, we are not related to those people. <laughs> Have nothing to do with them. <laughs> so evolution and atheism, there is no God. We are the products of chance chemistry. And of course, out of that comes existentialism, the notion that there is no absolute truth and that morality and right and wrong is relative. Paul the Apostle in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, we saw this earlier, stated, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will, be tar some will depart from the faith, giving heed to doctrines, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Again, the word giving heed in here in the, uh, in the Greek has the uh, notion of interfacing with, interacting with, like you and I are interacting right now. You're giving heed to me, we're interacting. And it also implies subtly the notion of worship. So people are gonna interact with, interface with deceiving spirits, fallen angels, and literally ultimately worship them as gods once they perform the lying signs and wonders. And these false deceivers will preach doctrines of demons. They will deny the biblical truths, they will deny the biblical worldview and get people to doubt, like Satan did, the word of God. Now, if the gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth, if Jesus really is who he said he was, the very creator of the universe, manifested in flesh, then the coming deception will be pretty easy to figure out. It will present a counterfeit Jesus and a counterfeit gospel. It will be accompanied by supernatural phenomena, and it will tempor temporarily deceive, as I mentioned, and as Jesus said, millions of nominal believers. Even the elect will be deceived for a while. Ultimately, I do not believe the elect will be deceived, though. And it will cause, of course, the people to worship the, create, the creature. Now, what would it take to deceive, if possible, even the very elect? We believe that it's not going to be just another belief system, another ism, another truth out there. Because every belief system that could exist, exists today. There is no God, there is a God. I'm God, you're God. The trees are God, Shirley MacLaine's God. The aliens are God. I mean, every belief system that could possibly exist already exists. So I, and, and yet the church is still here. God's elect are still here and they're still believing. I believe that in order to deceive the elect, it's going to take powerful, palpable, visible, lying signs and wonders, miraculous events to convince people that these entities are our benevolent friends here to help us. It will seem real. The coming deception is going to be a real event. It's going to look visible, palpable. You're going to be able to touch it, taste it, smell it, hear it, see it. Your intellect won't help you. Your five senses won't help you. And only spiritual discernment up ultimately will help us detect the coming deception. Now let's talk about the nature of angels. When we look at the nature of angels, we see some interesting things. Chuck's talked about this a little bit, and he's going to talk about it some more after me. I'm just going to touch a few highlights here. It's interesting that when you look in the Bible, you see primarily that angels appear as men. And they're often mistaken for men. They appeared as men to Abraham in the terebinths of Mamre in Genesis 18. They appeared as men to the uh, homosexuals in Sodom and Gomorrah. I think that if the angels had been, you know, semi-transparent beings with wings and halos, I don't think the homosexuals would have been real interested in them. You know, glowing apparitions with wings and halos, I don't think so. They looked like men. At the resurrection in Mark 16 and Luke 24, angels appeared as men. 
And at the ascension of Jesus Christ on the Mount of Olives, two men appeared in white in peril and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus will come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven, not on an alien beam ship. <laughs> so they appear as men. They speak as men. They take men by the hand. They eat men's food. When you look at the nature of fallen angels, they're capable of direct physical combat and can even harm mankind. They've caused physical disease in the body of Job. And the magicians, Janus and Jambres, in the book of Exodus, were able, through the power of Satan, to mimic the plagues of Moses, some of the plagues of Moses. They were able to create frogs, and they were able to uh, turn the uh, Nile to blood. And in Revelation 13, the false prophet, we read, causes the image of the beast to have life. In Hebrews 13, 2, we're told, do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. So the point is, is that angels, whether fallen or the good guys, have the capability to manifest physically in the form of human beings and fool us. In fact, they can probably take on any form, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Now let's look at the nature of aliens. Aliens usually appear in humanoid form. People that have spoken to me about their encounters with aliens have said they, they look like us. There's a number of different common groups of aliens that are recognized. You have the Nordic group, which they claim are from the star system, the Pleiades. We talked about some of their uh, beliefs that they've given to us earlier. You have the reptilians, which are supposedly the creators of mankind, the reptilian alien entities that were supposedly our creators. You've got the greys, which are the little, little uh, uh, hairless gray guys with the big eyes and the, uh, the gray skin that people frequently see during uh, abduction experiences. I personally believe that the greys are probably Nephilim hybrids. I just, I can't prove it, but it's just my suspicion. People that have seen these entities have seen them materialize and dematerialize directly in front of them. They're able to morph, to change shape directly in front of people. They're able to pass through walls, pass through windows, etc. And, as we saw, Satan and his aliens are able to manipulate matter miraculously. And according to abduction researchers, aliens are able to mingle genetically with humans producing supernatural, or producing uh, offspring. And Chuck's talked about that, and is going to talk about it more in the next session. Now, a number of researchers have looked at the whole alien phenomenon and have come to some startling conclusions about who they are and what their agenda is. Jacques Vallée, of course, the Frenchman that was portrayed in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, we looked at some of his things earlier, wrote a book called Dimensions. And in 1988, on page 32, speaking about the nature of aliens, he said, I am also tempted to accept as a working hypothesis that in times remote contact occurred between human consciousness and another consciousness, variously described as demonic, angelic, or simply alien. And several times, he says that when you look at the attributes, the activities, and the nature of aliens, they closely parallel that of angels and demons and many other supernatural entities. Dr. Pierre Guerin, writing in Flying Saucer Review, volume 25, number one, speaking about the nature of the UFO phenomenon, he said that UFO behavior is more akin to magic than to physics as we know it. The modern euphonauts and the demons of past days are probably identical. It's a startling conclusion. John Keel, who we talked about earlier, been researching UFOs for about three to four decades, wrote a book called Operation Trojan Horse. In 1996 edition, on page 266, he said, the UFOs do not seem to exist as tangible manufactured objects. They do not conform to the accepted natural laws of our environment. The UFO manifestations seem to be, by and large, merely minor variations of the age-old demonological phenomenon. Now, these men are scientists that are concluding this. These are not theologians. These are not 
philosophers. These are scientists that have been researching this material. Whitley Stryber wrote a book called Transformation, which came after his first book, Communion. And he recounted his encounters with what he thought were aliens and spoke extensively about what he thought they were and what their agenda was. And he's kind of waxed and waned over the past 10 years about whether they're good guys or bad guys and who are they and what are they and what is their agenda. But in his book, Transformation, in 1988, on page 190, he said, I felt an absolutely indescribable sense of menace. It was hell on earth to be there in the presence of the alien entities. And yet I couldn't move, couldn't cry out, couldn't get away. I lay as still as death, suffering inner agonies. Whatever was, th whatever was there seemed so monstrously ugly, so filthy and dark and sinister. Of course they were demons. They had to be. And they were here, and I couldn't get away. In the last session, we talked about what I called the gospel, according to E.T. People have received many messages from these alleged aliens. They've been told that the aliens are our creators. They've been told that the aliens created us, interfered with our evolution, and that through successive generations, they have impregnated human females and sent human alien light workers, avatars, or teachers into the world to successively enlighten mankind as to our origin, mission, and destiny on planet Earth. And they claim that we are that all roads lead to the same God, that truth is relative, and they deny over and over and over again the biblical worldview. John Ankerberg and John Weldon wrote a very good book called The Facts on UFOs and Other Supernatural Phenomena. And on page 13, they said this, Further, in light of the messages given by UFO, the UFO entities, how credible is it to think that literally thousands of genuine extraterrestrials would fly millions or billions of light years simply to teach New Age philosophy, deny Christianity, and support the occult? And why would the entities actually possess and inhabit people like demons do if they were really advanced extraterrestrials? Why would they consistently lie about things which we know are true? And why would they purposely deceive their contacts? Good question. When we examine the nature of alien contact, we find a number of disturbing parallels to contact with demons and fallen angels. We looked at channeling earlier, which is a process whereby you Work yourself up into a state of altered consciousness, clear your mind, and allow these supernatural alien entities to enter, take over, and speak through you. Channeling is akin to the age-old occultic contact with spirits and mediums, and is virtually identical, according to many people. We also talked about walk-ins. Walk-ins is the process whereby you, again, develop a state of altered consciousness, empty yourself, empty your mind, and allow the entities which they claim are highly evolved aliens who have shed the encumberment of a body and allowed them to come in and literally take over. In my opinion, walk-in is indistinguishable from demonic possession. It's virtually identical. We talked about automatic writing. Automatic writing has been used for hundreds of years to contact demonic spirits and allow them to give messages to mankind. And we talked about the abduction phenomenon, incredibly disturbing phenomenon, which has accelerated and is increasing according to researchers in this country. When you look at the abduction phenomenon and the alleged hybridization, the creation of half alien, half human beings, If they are fallen angels, then basically what we've got is the exact activities of Genesis chapter 6, when the sons of God took 
wives. When you read Genesis 6, there's a subtle hint there that these sons of God took the people against their will, of whom all they chose, it said. It's like, hey, you, you're mine, come here, you know. And indeed, the abduction phenomenon closely parallels the activity of Genesis 6. Many, many people have been given prophecies and prediction, predictions by aliens. Most of those prophecies have not come true. John Keel, in his book, Operation Trojan Horse, speaks, speaks extensively about dozens and dozens of people in the 50s and the 60s and 70s who were given false prophecies by aliens, that these people were told by the aliens to do something and to arrange their life in a, their life in a certain way to deal with the coming uh, prediction, and they would not come true, and it would destroy their lives or they'd lose their career because they believed the prophecies of these aliens. In Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7, Jesus is speaking about the end times. And he tells us that in the end times, we're going to hear of tremendous cataclysmic earth changes. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. In the book of Revelation, we read of extensive cataclysmic earth changes. And we're told in the Bible that these are the judgments of God. That God is going to judge planet earth. And there's going to be tremendous cataclysms that are going to occur. Well, this has been anticipated by our alien visitors. In the last couple of decades... Channelers and other contactees have received messages from these aliens to anticipate the arrival of tremendous cataclysmic earth changes. And they have explained it away as the birth pangs of Mother Earth. In a document called The Souls of Light, The Time is Now, on page 34, channeled information from one of, I believe this is from the Pleiadians, says this. There is much happening on your planet at this time. The mother, Mother Earth, is cleansing. It is all that she knows to do at this time to clear herself of the pollution that exists within her bodies. But you as light bearers can help your mother to cleanse in such a way that does not destroy all life on this planet. Much of this is necessary. Many of these beings have appointments to leave at this time. Earth's population needs to be decreased to bring forth the necessary changes upon this planet to move into the fourth dimension. Your Earth is a fourth dimensional being at this time. She has moved into this energy pattern and, upon, and those upon the Earth who plan to stay must be on the vibration. The Mother Diva, that is the Mother Earth, realizes that her matter must be purified. Her Akashic ethers, whatever that is, must be cleansed of the dark forces. So the notion is, is that Mother Earth is, having, is, uh, is infested, infected by people that they call the dark forces, people who are out of vibration with Mother Earth. And these dark forces must be cast off or eliminated in order for Mother Earth to evolve to the next stage of her evolution and to bring in the coming new age. In a book called Bringers of the Dawn, Teaching from the Pleiadians, which is channeled information from the Pleiadian entities through Barbara Marciniak, on page 168, it says this of the coming earth changes. Bless these changes that come to earth. You will find yourself tested. You will say, am I a victim here? Is the world collapsing around me? Or is it uplifting itself around me while everything is seemingly in the midst of collapse? It will seem that great chaos and turmoil are forming, that nations are rising against each other in war, and that earthquakes are happening more frequently. It will seem as if everything is falling apart and cannot be put back together. On page six of Bringers of the Dawn, the aliens tell us, humanity is learning a great lesson at this time. The lesson is, of course, to realize your godhood. Oh. Your connectedness with the prime creator and with all that exists. The lesson is to realize that everything is connected and that you are part of its all. Of, part of its all. So there's a coming earth change. There's coming earth changes. Mother Earth is trying to purge herself of the dark forces. 
And we're not supposed to worry. Everything's going to be fine. And we're supposed to realize our own godhood, our own deity. Now, the earth changes, as I said, are connected to a coming cleansing. Mother Earth is trying to cleanse herself. They will bring in a new paradigm, a new consciousness, and a new awakening on planet Earth. And incredibly, in the last 20 years, Indian shaman, New Age gurus, and many other channelers and other contactees have connected the coming Earth changes with the disappearance of millions of people. In the book, Bringers of the Dawn, Teaching from the Pleiadians, page 3 through 5, the Pleiadian entities, spoke, speaking through Barbara Marciniak, said this, We are here, we are the Pleiadians, a collective of energy. A major leap is about to take place. There are mother ships surrounding this planet that are acting as literal transducers of energy. If human beings do not change, if they do not make the shift in values and realize that without Earth they could not be here, then Earth, in its love for its own initiation, is reaching for a higher frequency, will bring about a cleansing that will balance it once again. There is a potential for many people to leave the planet in an afternoon. The people who leave the planet during the time of Earth changes do not fit here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of Earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Very soon, your government, with the assistance of our star seeds, will reveal to the world at large a truth that they have heretofore been guarding most effectively. Your government and the governments of other countries have been interacting with what you call extraterrestrials for many years. The public is now ready for the truth. The conditioning by television, newspapers, books, radio, and most importantly, the light workers, has done its job. And now it is safe to reveal to the inhabitants of planet Earth that we are here. It is, this is your wake up call, is the name of the article in Connecting Link Magazine, 1994, page 12 and 13. In another document, The Time Is Now, The Souls of Light, page 34, they go on. Many of these beings who are leaving this planet at this time have completed that which they came to do. It is a time of great rejoicing for them. Many beings must move on, for their thought patterns are of the past. They hold on to these thoughts that keep the earth held back. Some of you want to pretend that the earth changes are not occurring. This is from Earth Pleiadian Keys to the Living Library, page 220 and 221. Some of you want to pretend that the earth changes are not occurring. However, they are occurring. There is nothing to fear, for they are part of the process of the great shift. So instead of the wrath of God and the coming biblical earth changes in the book of Revelation, it's something wonderful. It's Mother Earth trying to purge herself of the dark forces and cleanse herself. Don't worry. Be happy. Everything's going to be fine, they're saying. And they go on. Whether you stay on the planet and alter your vibration, or you check out and sit in the bleachers to watch the show doesn't really matter. I don't know about you folks, but I'm hoping for a bleacher seat. <laughs> <laughs> on some level, in some avenue of existence, you will participate and you will learn. That's from Earth Pleiadian Keys to the Living Library, page 220. On page 25, again, this is Channeled information from Pleiadians through Barbara Marciniak. The times are changing, and it is not for you to panic over what is coming. It is a time for you to feel the exhilaration inside your being. The time you have been waiting for, your purpose, is on the cusp of being fulfilled. There is a method and great organization in a detailed plan already near completion for the purpose of removing souls from this planet in the event of catastrophic, catastrophic events making a rescue necessary. This is from Project World Evacuation, which is channeled information from the Ashtar Command, a group of aliens that are channeled. Um, it's a uh, book that was written in 1980 on page 16 and 17. They go on. We watch diligently the threat of a polar shift for your planet in your generation. Such a development would create a planetary situation through which no one could survive. This would necessitate an evacuation such as I have referred to. Page 106, Earth changes will be the primary factor in mass evacuation of this planet. That's actually page 97. P 
page 106. If atomic war does become activated, that will be the point of immediate mass evacuation by us of the prepared citizens of planet Earth. Page 128 and 29. The great evacuation will come upon the world very suddenly. The flash of emergency events will be as the lightning that flashes in the sky. So sudden and so quick uh, in its happening that it is over almost before you are aware of its presence. Our rescue ships will be able to come in close enough in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> twinkling of an eye? To set the lifting beams in operation in a moment. And all over the globe where events warrant it, this will be the method of evacuation. Mankind will be lifted, levitated, shall we say, by the beams from our smaller ships. These smaller craft will in turn taxi the persons to larger ships overhead, higher in the atmosphere, where there is ample space and quarters and supplies for millions of people. Phase one of the great evacuation, or great uh, exodus of souls from the planet, will take place at a moment's notice when it is determined that the inhabitants are in danger. Page 118 of Project World Evacuation. Page 119. Phase two, this second phase, immediately follows the first. The second phase is vital as we return for the children of all ages and races. The child does not have the power of choice in understanding nor personal accountability. Now, I find this interesting because theologians argue about whether or not children of non-believers will go in the rapture. And Satan has explained it away right here. If children disappear, don't worry, be happy. It's phase two of the plan. Page 31, Project World Evacuation. Do not be concerned nor unduly upset if you do not participate in this first temporary lift up of souls who serve with us. Don't worry, be happy, everything's fine. This merely means that your action in the plan is elsewhere and you will be taken for your instructions or will receive them in some other manner. Do not take any personal affront if you are not alerted or are not a participant in this first phase of our plan. Your time will come later, and these instructions are not necessary for you at this time. Page 31. <laughs> so these alien entities, these Pleiadians, the, the people from the Ashtar Command, have explained away the rapture of the church. And I like to point out that Satan hasn't spent any time trying to explain away the post-tribulation view. <laughs> <laughs> Earth Pleiadian Keys to the Living Library, page 90. There will be a return once the, once the uh, dark forces are taken out, once the people whose vibration is out of sync with Mother Earth, once they're taken out, there will be a return and an awakening to Mother Goddess energy. You will find in this decade that all of your religions are based on a false ideal. They are all based on a controlling, cold-hearted, patriarchal movement when in actuality, it is the mother goddess who is behind all things. I talked to you earlier about how the shaman and the ancient earth-based religions worshiped mother earth as a living entity, a body made of the earth and a soul, which, or the spirit, which is the uh, Greek goddess Gaia, the goddess of the earth. Well, the aliens seem to want us to worship this same uh, alleged deity. Now, what's interesting is, is that the aliens have anticipated our conference today. In Project World Evacuation on page 150, they said this, far from evil sorcerers of Satan, some have made the occupants of UFOs out to be, they are in reality truly messengers of light. So. Don't listen to Missler and Eastman. You see, really, they're not demons or fallen angels. They're actually messengers of light. Well, I hate to tell you this, uh, fallen angels, but the Holy Spirit anticipated you. Because in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself can transform himself into an angel of light. And the word angel is messenger. So we're told that the aliens are messengers of light. But the Bible says that Satan can conform himself into a messenger of light. So if a messenger of light comes up to you and gives you another gospel, 
Maybe he tells you that Jesus is the brother of Lucifer. You know, if I was Lucifer and I was going to invent a religion, I would probably say that Jesus was my brother, wouldn't you? I would. If someone comes to you as an angel of light and gives you a false gospel, don't be impressed by their lying wonders or their miracles. In Ephesians 2, verse 2, we're told that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. It says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. I think it's interesting that Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. Why the air? The air is the place where people see the UFOs and the aliens and all that. And it's interesting, I think, that Satan's called the prince of the power of the air. Hmm, could it be that he's behind all this alien weirdness? I don't know. In Matthew 12, 24, it states, Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Beelzebub is one of the names of Satan. And Jesus, they said, was casting out demons with the power of Satan. In Matthew 12, 27, Jesus said, And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, therefore they shall be your judges. Now, the word Beelzebub, one of the names of Satan, is literally the Lord of those that fly or the Lord of those that flit. So Satan is the prince of the power of the air and the Lord of those that fly. Wow. And who's flying around in our skies? Evil spirits, feigning benevolence, trying to convince us that they are our creators and our benevolent space brothers here to help us in these days of apocalypse, they say. Now, we have to ask some serious questions here. If extraterrestrials are simply highly evolved beings from another planet somewhere who are visiting us, why do they promote pantheism, the notion that everything is God worldwide? And why do they promote Mother Earth worship? Why don't they promote Christianity or Buddhism or I mean, one specific religion? They promote the pantheistic worldviews and the notion of Mother Earth worship primarily. And why do they go out of their way to discredit what some writers call the prevailing religious paradigm, which is the Judeo-Christian worldview? At least uh, it was prevailing at one time. It has. Uh, Europe is a post-Christian nation today, and America is headed that way very rapidly if it's not already there. Why are, abductees, why are abductees told that Jesus is not the Son of God? I didn't talk about this, but many people have been told that while they were abducted by the aliens, the aliens went out of their way to tell them that, oh, by the way, you know, Jesus is not the Son of God. And why are all abductees involved in some sort of New Age or neo-occultic practices? Now, if extraterrestrials were of satanic origin, what would we expect? Well, we would expect them to contradict the biblical worldview. We would expect them to say things like, you are gods, or there is no God. We would expect them to present a false Jesus, and we would expect them to cause people to worship the creature rather than the creator. We would expect them to explain away sin, salvation, the second coming, Armageddon, the rapture, and on and on and on. Now let's look at, review what we've talked about earlier. In the Bible, it teaches that God is the creator, that a transcendent being who existed before time and space created the heavens and the earth and the life forms on it. The UFO satanic counterfeit teaches that we are gods, that ETs are our creators, or that evolution is the process of how we got here. The Bible teaches that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father. The New Age counterfeit, channeled by extraterrestrials, teaches that Jesus is a half-human, half-extraterrestrial, and that we can evolve into Christ's, and that Jesus is simply an ascended master of the New Age movement. The Bible teaches that man has a sin nature. Satan's counterfeit teaches that sin does not exist. The Bible teaches that God must judge sin, the New Age counterfeit teaches that after we die, some writers state, that we go to a place where we punish ourselves. We go to a place after we die and we contemplate 
all of our evil deeds. And then we have to then inflict punishment on ourselves. Well, I don't know about you folks, but if that's the case, I'm going to be, be real easy on me. <laughs> the Bible teaches that Jesus resurrected from the dead. The New Age counterfeit teaches that Jesus used his alien technology to regenerate his body and that he was taken up by a UFO into a mothership. The Bible teaches that the earth changes are the fulfillment of Matthew 24 and 25 and that they are the wrath of God spoken about in the book of Revelation. Satan's counterfeit teaches that Mother Earth is bringing in a new paradigm. It's something wonderful. It's not to be feared. It's something wonderful. And it's specifically not God's judgment. And it is a necessary cleansing of the Mother Earth to bring in a new age or what they call the paradigm shift. The Bible teaches the rapture is the removal of the saints. Satan's counterfeit, as channeled by these, new, these, uh, these alien entities, teaches that it is the removal of those who no longer fit in. It's the removal of the evil dark forces who are out of vibration with Mother Earth. The removal of those whose thought patterns are no longer productive. The removal of the dogmatic, ignorant, fearful people who are standing in the way of the arrival of the New Age. And it's the first step in the evacuation of planet Earth by extraterrestrials. The Bible teaches that Jesus is coming again, and that he's coming in the clouds, the second coming. The New Age counterfeit, as channeled by these alien entities, teaches that the second coming is actually the realization of our own Christhood. It's not the coming of a physical Jesus Christ. It's the paradigm shift. And the second coming, they say, will also be when Jesus comes in an alien beam ship. Now, I.D.E. Thomas, in his book, The Omega Conspiracy, on page 201, asks the question. He says, why do they, the extraterrestrials, advocate such unbiblical propositions as belief in an impersonal God, endless improvement in the hereafter, men are not lost sinners in need of divine mercy, Christ was divine only in the sense that all men are alleged to be divine, the cross was not an atonement for man's sins, Christ's resurrection was a mere materialization, and man's hopes lies in human works and not in divine grace. Good question. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, we're told this. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 and 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and now already is in the world. Some people in this literature that I've been reading in the last couple years will say, well, I believe in Jesus. I believe that God made aliens out there on many different planets and that Jesus has gone around from planet to planet to planet, living life after life after life and dying for the sins of God's other alien children. Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, 9, yeah, 9 and 10, it says, Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. So he died once, and he died for all. He's not flying around the universe, sprinkling planets, and then going back and dying on crosses on other planets. He died once and for all. Now, what can we expect? I believe that we're going to see an increased activity of UFO sightings and these alleged alien contacts. The Bible tells us that in the end times, we're going to see supernaturally, satanically energized times. That many will come in his name, performing signs and wonders, and there will be fearful signs in the heavens as the end and the second coming approaches. I believe we'll see increased claims of extraterrestrial life and, and possibly even extraterrestrial archaeology on other planets claimed by the scientific community. I believe that we will see announcements, possibly in our lifetime, of the reality of extraterrestrials and UFOs by our government and the governments of the world. 
I believe that someday there will be an undeniable sighting that will once and for all convince the governments of the world and force them to admit that indeed the phenomenon is real. I believe we'll see in the face of this increasing claims by secular sources that the Christian worldview is archaic and is outdated and is no longer a productive worldview to help us understand the nature of our origin, mission, and our destiny on planet Earth. I believe also that we will see persecution of the church. I believe that the church will be treated like a bunch of imbeciles. We're a bunch of people who are out of vibration with Mother Earth. People who are the dark forces, people whose thought patterns are no longer productive. I believe we'll see that probably in our lifetime. It's actually, it's increasing. It's in China, it's in many other places around the world. Right now, the church is being terribly persecuted. But I believe someday we'll even see it in the United States of America. It's there now, but it's sort of underground. But it's politically correct to bash Christians today. You can't bash any other group, but it's okay to bash Christians. And I believe that if there is any type of open ET contact, that it will be the most shocking event in the history of mankind, and I believe that it will cause a tremendous falling away, the falling away that was spoken about by the Apostle Paul, the great apostasy, a sudden falling away of the church, people doubting the biblical worldview. I believe that many people in the church are going to be deceived by these fallen angels who are feigning their benevolence. And I believe that we'll see tremendous signs and wonders. Jesus used an idiom of pregnancy and childbirth, conception, pregnancy, and childbirth when he spoke about the end times. He said it would be as a woman who is in travail and labor. And the thing that concerns me is that as a medical doctor, I've seen a lot of women that have gone through this. And the problem is, is that the false labor pains start long before the baby is born. And the false labor pains can be very intense and virtually indistinguishable from the real thing. And if a woman is not properly mentored, she will be caught unaware when the real thing comes. I believe the church is going to see a significant amount of satanic activity, maybe alien activity, maybe UFO activity, etc., before the arrival of Christ and before the rapture of the church. I don't think the church is going to get off scot-free. Of course, the rapture will be explained away as an alien evacuation. The dark forces, the people whose thought patterns are no longer productive, are going to be taken onto these ships where there's ample supply and quarters for millions of people, and they're going to be re-educated about the truth of their origin, mission, and destiny on planet Earth. I believe these are very dark times we're living in, and we need to do our homework. In Luke, chapter 21, we're given a, war we're given a warning by Christ in verse 25. Luke 21, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and on earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. When these things begin to happen, you know that the time draws near. Chuck Smith likes to use an illustration. He'll say that right after Halloween every year, you notice that the Christmas decorations start to go up. And the more Christmas decorations you see, you know that Thanksgiving is coming soon. <laughs> it's coming, folks. Let's pray. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for warning us and giving us the signs of your near coming. Strengthen us, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. 
Help us to be a witness and a testimony to this hurting world in these dark times. We thank you, Lord, that we can worship you with our heart, our mind, and our spirits. And we praise you and thank you for organizing this conference. And we ask that we would go out of here as a testimony to the truth of the gospel and of the evils of the phenomena we've discussed today. We praise you and thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen.